variance is the second very important property of a random variable to learn after learning expected value. Variance is a measure of how spread out the data is. Many times, many times people will ignore variance or not, or not give it as much importance as say the expected value or the mean because it's so much easier and intuitive to understand what expected value or mean is. But in reality, in my opinion, variance is the most important property of a random variable because variance is where everything, where is, variance defines whether or not a random variable is interesting or even worthwhile to pay attention to. The mean can be whatever it is. It's not that important. The expected value is just the expected value. But variance is where change occurs in a random variable. What does that mean? It means if the variance is low, or in the worst case, zero, you don't even have a random variable. It's not interesting to look at because you pretty much, it's not random. You know what's going on. If the variance of a, of a random variable, let's say our variance of a random variable x is equal to zero, then, well, nothing's happening. No matter how many times you sample x, you're only gonna get one value out. You're only going to get, x will always equal the expected value of x, which is the mean. And so only one number is ever gonna come out. That's not a random variable, that's an, an unrandom variable. It's a completely deterministic variable. It, it simplifies back down to algebraic variables. These are not interesting. And so variables become very interesting once the variance becomes non-zero. And when you're dealing with multidimensional systems, when you're dealing with, with data sets that have multiple dimensions in them, what you really are very interested in is finding the dimensions and the random variables when you model them where the variance is large. Because when the variance is large, that means there's a lot of activity going on there. That's where the interesting change within the data is happening. And so variance is critical. A good chunk of data science and modeling and statistics is all about figuring out ways in which your model can capture the most amount of variance that's present in the data set. And if you can do that, then it means you're actually building a very good model. It's one of the measures that you have of testing to ensure that what you are modeling is indeed representative of all of the change that can occur in a data in the data set or has been observed to occur in the data set. The idea though of variance is relatively simple, right? Let's say that we have two data sets here. We have a yellow distribution, a yellow data set, and it looks something like this. And then we have our green data set and let's see if I can do this so that it actually has the same mean and it looks something like this. And giving these names, let's name the yellow one X and we'll name the green one Y. If these are both being modeled as normals, then you can say, well, the means look up the same, but just without any modeling at all. You can just say it by this definition that variance is how spread out a data set is or how spread out a random variable is. If X is the random variable, without any actual following a model, but just X is the random variable that describes the distribution and Y is the, the random variable that describes this distribution. What can we conclude? We can conclude the variance of X is greater than the variance of Y. Oops, wrong color. And why is that? Well, that's because this the data that lies in here, right, this is all the data that for y, is not as spread out along whatever arbitrary axis we're talking about is, then the data that lies along x. Thus, the variance is greater. Variance can, can, can vary, <laughs> no pun intended, between zero, right, very uninteresting, to infinite. It's just a mathematical number that represents how spread out the data is. That's, 
that's all that's all you want to think about for now that's the intuition behind what variance is in the next in the next video we'll look at how to actually calculate this